What does Mary Co-Redemptrix have to say to you and to me about our lives and our call to suffering? Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And you know, my friends, there's two things that we have to have in common, even if you're looking at this program. Number one, you're alive. Number two, you are having suffering in your life because that's true for all of us. All of us suffer. And everyone who's alive in the history of humanity has had to carry their cross whether they wanted to or not. And so suffering is a reality for us. And I think some would argue that suffering is on the increase in general for humanity today. What do we do with the suffering? How do we respond to the suffering? And what do we make of when John Paul II, in his document on Christian suffering, said the following, that through suffering, you can grow closer to Jesus Christ than in any other way. That's a phenomenal statement for a vicar of Christ to say, that through suffering, you can get closer to Jesus than any other way. That's the power of suffering when we respond to suffering in a way that Jesus wants us to respond. Now, every truth about our Blessed Virgin Mary will have a direct bearing, a direct relevance to the church. Theologically, we say that every truth on Our Lady can be applied to the church as a model. So who's the church? We are the church, the people of God, the people of God in union with the Vicar of Christ on earth, the people of God who hold to the creed, who celebrate Mass in union with the sacred and ordained priest. We who live the faith based on an acceptance of the depositum fide, the, the deposit of faith, we are the church. And we, as church, will experience suffering. Who better to look at for an example of how we are to endure suffering than our Blessed Mother, the co-redemptrix? And therefore, how fruitful it would be if our Holy Father were to discern it to be the appropriate time to solemnly proclaim Mary as the co-redemptrix, so you and I would have a, a greater penetration, a greater understanding, a greater experience of how we are supposed to deal with the suffering of the present day. So Mary, co-redemptrix, says to you and me that we are called to be co-redeemers in Christ. Yeah, that's the expression of Pope Pius XI in the 1930s and Pope John Paul II on three occasions during his glorious pontificate, that you and I are called to be co-redeemers in Christ. Now, where scripturally are we called to understand what, what can that mean and, and what is our task and how we deal with suffering? Let's go to the famous passage of 1 Corinthians 3, 9, where St. Paul calls all Christians to be, quote, co-workers with God. Well, that tells us clearly that co can't mean equal. We're not equal with God, but we all have to cooperate. We all have to work with God in the work of human salvation and in our own salvation. And then perhaps to the most mysterious passage of Scripture, that's Colossians 1.24. St. Paul tells you and me that we are called to, quote, make up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ, for the sake of his body, which is the church. Make up what is lacking the sufferings of Christ. No, doesn't that at first hearing sound a little presumptuous? That you and I can do something that Jesus didn't complete? That's not the intention of St. Paul or the Holy Spirit through St. Paul in that passage. What indeed scripture is calling each one of us to do is to understand that in God's generosity, in the generosity of Jesus Christ, the universal redeemer, he paid the objective infinite price for just compensation for your sins and for my sins. It's an infinite, inexhaustible gift that he gives us in paying the price for human sin. But he, as John Paul II says, leaves that open to us to fulfill in this sense, that we have a role as church, as members of the people of God in union with the Holy Father, to release by our sufferings the grace merited by Jesus' suffering and secondarily by Mary as the new Eve at Calvary. That's right. By the sufferings you have today, this day, you can actually release graces which will cause your own sanctification 
and the salvation of others around us. This is what St. Paul calls us to do when he calls us to, quote, make up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. Now, for some that might sound rather theoretical, but when it gets to the practice, what exactly are we supposed to do? Okay, so you have a suffering in your life. I know you have a suffering because you're alive, and all of us have some suffering. You have a suffering right now. And I ask you to take a moment and to focus on the greatest suffering in your life right now. Or you've identified it. That's your greatest suffering right now. You have two options with how to deal with that suffering. Number one, you can have it lead you to anger, to bitterness, and even to distance from God, saying, why would a good God allow me to bear this greatest suffering right now? That's option A. Option B is to say, even though I don't fully understand the reason why I'm called to suffer this suffering, as it is the greatest suffering of my life, I'm going to respond to this suffering the way Mary responded to her suffering with Jesus. I'm going to say, be it done unto, unto me according to thy word. And I'm going to combine that with the words of Jesus in the garden, saying, Father, take this cup from me. Yeah, it's okay if we pray that suffering be removed. But if not, if it not be your will, then your will be done, not mine. When we endure the suffering, the suffering I'm talking about, and that you know you're experiencing right now, when we endure it that way, as Our Lady endured it, then it becomes supernaturally fruitful. And that's why, for example, you notice oftentimes when you're suffering an intense suffering, you're not oftentimes tempted by your thorn in the flesh, the things that typically distract you. Why? Because the cross is right before you. And that the weight of that cross is so much so that uh, it, it's got all of your attention. And so sometimes, only through these types of sufferings, can Jesus say, I want you focused on me. I want you remembering that at every moment of your suffering, I am in your heart if you're in grace. I'm not just around you, I'm with you and I'm in you. And I will sustain you if you keep your eyes fixed on me. That's why one of the greatest examples we have in Scripture of focus during suffering is the example of Peter during the storm. And indeed, Peter steps out and he's doing the impossible. He's walking on water while he keeps his eyes fixed on Jesus. And remember, when he has his eyes fixed on Jesus, Jesus has his, his hand extended to Peter. But as soon as he takes his eyes off Jesus, he can't endure either the storm around him or the miracle of survival of what he's doing right now, walking on water. That's true for you and me. While we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, and no one like our Blessed Mother will help us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus during the intensity of our greatest suffering, then we can, we can endure. We can sometimes walk on water. We can carry crosses. We could never conceive that we could have carried because our eyes are fixed on Christ and His hand is always extended to us. And that's what Mary does at Calvary. Mary, the Second Vatican Council says, consented to the immolation of this victim born of her. What does that mean? That means Mary said yes to the destruction of her divine, innocent son. How many mothers could do that? How many mothers could say, yes, I accept that my son will have to die so that many others will live? Mary does that. She's the co-redemptrix, and that's why she's the perfect example for you and me on how we are to suffer the greatest suffering we're facing right now. We're going to talk more about this in the next segment, but let me, let me end by saying, Jesus knows your suffering. Our Lady knows your suffering. They want to help. Allow them to sustain you by trusting in Jesus and by looking to Mary as our model of suffering. She is the co-redentrix for you and for me. This is Dr. Mark Milvalli. Thanks for being with us at MaryCast. God bless you.